Today we are going to study two kinds of high voltage transformers with ferrite iron at their cores. And one is this ferrite bar here, around which I've wrapped 8 plus 8 turns of a primary coil with attachments on the two ends and in the center for zero volt switching. We have covered it with mylar tape as insulation and we're going to put this coil with 2000 turns over the end to make power. The second is this U or C shaped coil again covered with mylar tape for insulation. We, now we've gone down to 3 plus 3 turns for zero volt switching connections on the ends and the center and we're going to put another ferrite bar over it to make a closed circular shape to see what happens. And this 2000 turn coil we'll just go over one of the bars like that and then we're going to put the other bar and make it closed circular. So today we'd like to study the properties of these two transformers and learn the physics by which they behave. We're going to start with this nice little linear piece of ferrite which has 8 plus 8 turns of primary coil wrapped around it rubber coated and at what's called a ZVS driver, zero volt switching with an inductive choke. There's a DC power supply over here. The way it works is they, they wrap for eight turns and then the DC power comes in here another eight turns and it comes out. Each of those goes to a different MOSFET and they split back and forth to give you high frequency power. Now in addition we've got what, a capacitor in parallel with this primary coil and it takes quite a large capacitor for this kind of system. One microfarad or a thousand nanofarad and that'll turn on here at nine volts as you'll see in a minute. And they've got a big 2000 turn secondary coil on the other end which can produce wireless power as you'll see. So let's just turn the thing on then we'll summarize how it works. Here you go now. We start turning it on. The volt MOSFETs haven't come on yet. The MOSFETs come on at 5 or 6 volts and the current builds up. It keeps building up and then at 9 volts the oscillation will switch on. You watch the current drop. See how it dropped from 2 amps to 0.3? That's when this thing began to oscillate in an AC sense, and now we've got 33 kilohertz. But the power is still low. Let's turn it up a bit now. Let's go to 20 volts, which is quite safe. 20 volts, 0.8 amp, 16 watts. We're still at 33 kilohertz. This little coil is oscillating back and forth, and this thing's responding like a transformer. 2000 turns of the voltage is going up 2000 divided by 8 times 20 and you see right away we're getting some wireless power into this light here and we're getting 33 kilohertz. Now we can go up to about 25 on this one amp before the MOSFETs start hissing. The limit of the power on this is the MOSFET stability 33 kilohertz. So that's good. Let's just summarize what this little linear ferrite coil does. Ferrite coil linear. The primary coil is 8 plus 8 turns of just rubber coated wire which is this stuff attached in the middle as a ZVS driver which is this big thing with two MOSFETs. The capacitor in parallel with the primary coil has to be quite large about a thousand nanofarads or one microfarad 500 at least and it turns on at about 9 volts begins to oscillate at 20 volts DC if we don't have a secondary coil if this big thing is missing it still oscillates but the current's only 0.25 amps and 50 kilohertz we put the secondary coil on there to slide it on it's mylar insulated so there's no current going between the coil and the ferrite secondary coil of 2000 turns 0.5 millimeter wire we get one amp of current, 33 kilohertz, a bit lower, and we get a wireless AC signal as I've just showed. Let's just do it one more time. Twenty-five volts, one amp, thirty watts, and there's your wireless signal, and there's your thirty-three kilohertz. Now what we're gonna do next, we're going to 
change from this linear piece of ferrite to some other shapes and see how that affects the system. Next we are going to study another kind of ferrite core. We have a U-shaped piece of ferrite with a bar below it to make it circular. Now this is so efficient in the primary coil has to have fewer turns and by trial and error instead of 8 plus 8 we've gone to 3 plus 3 otherwise the whole system gets overloaded. Our secondary coil again contains 2,000 turns of 0.5 millimeter wire. Now I'm going to assemble it and we'll turn on the power and we'll look at its properties. Now I have assembled the ferrite coil, the U-shape with the bar to make a closed circular shape. We've got 3 plus 3 turns on the primary, 2,000 turns on the secondary of 0.5 wire, mylar insulation tape to stop the iron from getting into the secondary. We have a ZVS driver with two MOSFET zero volt switching, inductive clamp. Now we're going to turn on the power and see what happens. The MOSFETs turn on at about 5 volts and then the current will build up until about 9 volts when the oscillation starts. See it drop now. Now it just drops you see from 1.5 to 0.3 amps. And now we've got 45 kilohertz of AC oscillation between the primary and the secondary. At this weak voltage there's no wireless power yet so we've got to turn it up a bit higher to about 20 volts 1 amp, 20 watts and now you can see a light bulb is glowing let's go a little bit higher at 25 volts 33 watts now the bulb is glowing quite brightly in summary by making closed circular ferrite rather than a linear ferrite we get very similar results but we have many few primary turns 3 plus 3 rather than 8 plus 8 we get 45 kilohertz we had about 35 kilohertz linear and the bulb is again glowing let's just summarize the properties of closed circular ferrite ferrite core circular primary coil 3 plus 3 kerns ZVS driver capacitor in parallel with the primary coil 100 nanofarad is squealed no good 220 nanofarad 40 volts 92 kilohertz 470 nanofarad 30 volts 65 kilohertz 1000 nanofarad 20 volts 1 amp 45 kilohertz 2200 nanofarads 15 volts 1 amp 33 kilohertz and 20 10,000 nanofarad a squeal I've got a 1 microfarad or 1,000 nanofarad capacitor on there now. 20 volts, 1 amp, 45 kilohertz. And that's what we see. The bulb lights up. So in summary, our range is roughly from 220 to 2,200 nanofarads. We can get a range of frequencies from 33 to 92 kilohertz using this simple system. Now the advantage of this system, the circular ferrite over the linear is we get a much higher output voltage. So for the linear we amplify transform 2000 turns over 16 turns up about 125x so 20 or 30 volts DC goes to 2 or 3 kV AC. For the circular 2000 over 6 turns up about 350x 20 30 or volt, volts DC goes to 7 or 10 kV AC. So that's what we were getting out here. The next thing I'm going to do is investigate whether current actually flows to the iron or just magnetism. So we're just going to take a little piece of polycarbonate and put it over that iron ferrite bar and we'll put it back on so no current can flow and we'll see what the electricity transform comes out to be. We've reassembled the ferrite to a closed shape but notice we have a little polycarb piece going all the way across so no current can flow from the U-shape into the iron bar below. Only magnetism. We'll turn on the power again and you can see the MOSFETs turn on at 5 volts. Current increases to about 9 volts and it drops just as before. So let's turn it up to 20 volts and see what the properties are. So we're at 20 volts, 1 amp just as before, and the light's still glowing quite nicely. 
instead of 45 kilohertz, we're at 48 kilohertz. It's glowing even better, perhaps. So putting a piece of polycarb there seems to have no effect whatsoever on the efficiency of the system. Now we're going to do almost the same experiment, but instead of a little sheet of polycarbonate, we're going to use Mylar high voltage insulation tape. Put some of that over each end of the U-shaped coil so no current can flow. Put it back on top of this other piece of ferrite and see what happens. Now we've reassembled it into a circular shape so no current can flow between the upper U-shape and the lower bar on either side. We're going to put the power on here and we'll see at about 9 volts the current will drop as it starts oscillating. There. And we're oscillating at 46 kilohertz, but no wireless power yet. Let's turn it up. There's 20 volts, 47 kilohertz, quite strong wireless power as before. Let's just continue a little further. If we put a, put a 5 millimeter sheet of perspex between the U coil and the bar at the same 20 volts, 1 amp, then we see 50 hertz and we get some lighting but maybe not quite as strong. Next when we separate the lower iron bar from the U-shape completely and go again to 20 volts, the 3 plus 3 turns on the primary at a 1 microfarad capacitor, we see 53 kilohertz coming out but we can hardly see any transform power. It's very weak. There's no light coming out of the bulb at all. If we turn up the power a little bit more, 25 volts, we can just see a little bit. At 30 volts, we can see a little bit. In summary, we've learned two things today by working with ferrite coil transformers. First, we started with a little linear bar of ferrite with 8 plus 8 turns for a ZVS driver and we put this 2,000 turn secondary coil over it and we got some power but not too much. Eight turns was suitable. The ZVS driver has two MOSFETs and a one microfarad capacitor here. And these MOSFETs overheating and the capacitor overheating limit the power of the system. The capacitor gets hot first. is the thing that's going to break first. Secondly then we went to this circular piece of ferrite which is made by putting a U-shaped ferrite on top of a bar. It has a lot more power. So what we had to do first of all we had to reduce 8 plus 8 turns down to 3 plus 3 turns in the zero volt switching driver. So these two MOSFETs wouldn't get burned out. There was also a trouble with squeal vibration at 8 plus 8 turns. Secondly we characterized why this bar here gives so much more power and we established it's not because electric current flowing around by putting insulators in there. It's the magnetic field flowing around. It's just a magnetic connection and not electrical. So when we work with these devices, we have to understand the physics and all of the properties in order to do it efficiently. And I've learned a lot today and I hope you have also. Thank you very much.